Hi everyone, welcome to day seven of the virtual exhibition. We have just one more day to go after today. Um, today we are at John O'Groats, the most northerly village settlement in mainland Great Britain. Uh, beautiful evening again, the sun's setting. John O'Groats is iconic for the hotel at the moment. I'll go into the history later, but it's iconic for the beautiful coloured cabins, the harbour. Um, we've got people just coming uh, and the signpost, and we've got people coming off the boat here. Uh, they've just come across from Orkney. It's lovely to have you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and right, just the admin as per normal, all the paintings that you see uh, throughout the week are available to purchase at lisamcdonaldart.com. There's 20% off all paintings uh, for just for, just for one more day. And there's free shipping wherever you are in the world on the, all of the paintings. And 20%, no, it's 10% of the large of the purchase price for the large paintings is donated to Sea Sanctuary which is a charity down in Cornwall who do amazing things for people with mental health issues by taking them out onto the sea. Um, I think that's the admin so yeah let's just get cracking and give you some facts about John O'Groat so and again I'm not a historian so I'll just give you the basic facts and then I'll tell you how I respond to this place as an artist and how it has inspired me already. Um, but it was first, um, it was first recognized as a settlement in 1500 and uh, it's named after a Dutchman called Jan de Groot. And the story goes that he had seven descendants, whether they were women or men, and they would argue about who had precedence uh, or who would take his side so he built uh, an octagonal house with an oct octagonal table which was just up there uh, which was just up there where the hotel is uh, so that's the original settlement of um, Jan de Groot's house and actually the uh, the turret of the hotel mimics the shape of the house so that's the uh, early history and then um, we were going to do some filming in the last house uh, but we have issues with the, um, with the Wi-Fi and, and with me speaking with the mask so we've come outside but the last house is actually the earliest uh, recorded building here at John O'Groats as well so we maybe after we finish filming here we'll go over and get some shots of the last house so much history in this place by the way if we drop out of um, filming it means the 4G's dropped if that happens we'll carry on recording and we'll upload later okay so we're just trying our best to get through this go live um, so uh, you can take from here you can take the boat across to Orkney um, I don't know if you can see in the background the Orkney Islands just across the Pentland Firth and the Pentland Firth which, which is this strip of sea which you can see in front of us is notoriously difficult to cross um, tidal pools it's really strong currents and it's where the North Sea meets the Atlantic Sea it's a really very difficult piece of water to cross. You need to know and navigate these whirlpools that are in it. Um, but because of all the strong current, uh, there's plenty of shipwrecks out in the sea. And now, um, so plenty of shipwrecks. And then just over there behind the boat is Stroma, okay? So Stroma is an island that is, uh, it was connected to Scotland. It's not connected to Orkney. It's, um, but the history over there is amazing, right? So I've actually been across to Stroma. You can, you have to know a man who knows a man and you get a boat across. And it's now, uh, they use it, the guy who owns it is uses it for grazing sheep. But the history of Stroma is that it uh, had an 
maximum it had a maximum population of 350 I think it was 350 people it, me it reached its climax population in 1901 and then it, the population started to decline until 1960 when it um, was in, it became an uninhabited apart from one family who stayed to take care of the lighthouse. Um, so that is Stroma for you. Amazing. I just want you to settle in to all these amazing sea and sky and just see the sunset and again it's just um so this is the kind of stuff that just inspires me right and it's still at what we nearly seven o'clock in the evening and it's still plenty of people on the go so for those that aren't uh, aware of John O'Groats um that this is actually that lots of people take this for a charity they actually uh, use this for starting adventures finishing adventures uh, so there's many people that do lands end to John O'Groats in cars or uh, they walk it this year I've actually met two people uh, when I've been out and about doing my inspiration gathering on the cliffs I've met two adventurous souls who have um, opted to walk from John O'Groats to Land's End and I'm following them now on Instagram and these people were so inspiring to meet uh, there was a young girl who wanted to walk from John O'Groats to Land's End it's about 600 miles I'm not entirely sure of the mileage I can't see the sign from here and she was doing it just literally uh, with a backpack walking down the cliffs first of all to Inverness and then carrying on down to all through England down to uh, Land's End she was doing it to find herself and then the other guy I met exactly you can recognize these people they've got all their packs on as they're walking um, and he was doing it to raise money for dolphins in India and he's doing it with this dog uh, so I always just love to bring them into the garden, give them a cup of tea uh, and just hear about their stories, really inspiring people. So you meet all sorts of people here at John O'Groats, love it for the different types of people that come, all the adventurous souls. Um, so it's an amazing place to be and come just for the history, the people, the culture, but it's also good for the inspiration as well. So I think Gordy was just showing you the painting. Uh, the reason we've bought this one today is because it was inspired by a trip across to Orkney. So really, I really highly recommend going across to Orkney if you do come up this way, or across to the Orkney Islands. And uh, the trip actually with my dad, hi dad if you're looking, watching. Um, we were walking the Brow of Berse and the Yesna Bay Cliffs and it was abso absolutely amazing, beautiful sunny day. The sea was saturated in these blue colours, like all those aquamarine and ah, uh, you know, you just want to dive into the sea that kind of day. So I took loads of shots as I've been explaining how in the week how I work is I take the photographs. Um, so this one is called, as always, they have a story. This one's called In the Balance. So this is her story. There are moments and episodes in life when everything hangs in the balance. We are caught between two directions. Suspended in motion, we have no choice but to wait. To wait for the balance to tip one way or the other so that life can continue. Our lesson is to breathe in the peace and the wholeness of the moment, to enjoy the stillness. Everything will unfold in its own time, but for now, it is your time to pause and surrender to being in the balance. So hopefully you got some inspiration from that. Um, yeah, so just take in the sunset again. It's just absolutely, this is your virtual tour of being in the far north of Scotland. The beds are just, the boats are being put to bed. All the creels are down there. And um, yeah, just absolutely beautiful place. So let me just tell you, I'll just briefly finish on the story of Stromer again, um, that when you go across, there's all these abandoned houses 
um, that you can actually walk around and you can see the belongings that people left. So there are 300, and, I think it was 375 people that used to live over there, imagine. And now the island is deserted. So such a fascinating place to visit. And knowing as well that out on the sea there's so many shipwrecks um, and boats that have just been left at the bottom of the seabed and across just I'm, I don't think you'll see it on the camera but just across the water is Orkney and the Orkney Islands so yeah beautiful beaches to walk along here too you can walk along to Duncansby stacks and see the stacks that uh, jut out of the water So just take a moment, I think that's me for tonight, so just take a moment, enjoy the view and then um, uh, we will come back, right, so just one more night to go. I hope you've enjoyed these videos as much as I've enjoyed making them. One more video to go, one more live to go, tomorrow night we go live at 7 o'clock with live music again. We've got Pete and Chris Nicol on mandolin and accordion. They're going to come back in the house and play some tunes for us tomorrow night. If you've missed any of the other videos, go back and see them. Um, the Piper last night was amazing. The Highland Dancing, Emily in the Garden playing fiddle, um, Harry Gray telling stories, and then I've got some studio chats there too. So remember, you've just got one more day to check out the paintings at the reduced rate of 20% off. LisaMcDonaldArt.com. Yeah, I think that's me. So. Enjoy the view for a minute and I will see you tomorrow night.